A deranged face with bloodshot eyes, large horns, fangs and a long tongue. He's covered in fur and is gigantic in scale. He is. Everything has its opposite. Good has its evil. Light has its shadow. Nice has its naughty and Saint Nicholas has Krampus. Typically described as a half goat, half demon creature, it's easy to compare Krampus to, or even mistake him for, the devil. Because the two figures bear such a striking resemblance, the Catholic Church tried to eliminate Krampus celebrations during the 12th century. This attempt was unsuccessful, and the tradition continued. His image alone ought to be horrifying enough to keep naughty kids in line, but those who dare challenge Krampus, as the legend suggests, would endure an extreme punishment of being beaten with birch twigs, kidnapped and taken back to his lair, tortured, and even eaten. Krampus's pre-Germanic origins are unrelated to Christmas, and is thought to have initially been a part of pagan rituals practiced for winter solstice. He later became associated with Christmas, which, as mentioned, the Catholic Church tried to ban at one point in time. He is sometimes referred to as the Christmas Devil. While his true origins are unknown, the myth of Krampus has roots in what is now considered Germany, where traditionally, people began celebrating Christmas earlier in the month. The name Krampus comes from the word Krampen, which is German for claw. In Germanic tradition, St. Nicholas is a benevolent figure who gives sweets to good children, while Krampus, his malevolent counterpart, beat and kidnapped the bad children. In essence, their origin story recounts how St. Nicholas and Krampus traveled together working as a team, rather than opposing forces, one bearing rewards while the other brought fear and punishment. The good and the bad duo would arrive in tandem on December 5th, which is known as Krampenschnatt, which translates to Krampus Night. They'd go door to door, and either Saint Nick would leave presents for the good children, or Krampus would beat the naughty ones with sticks and branches. In some lore, he might even eat them or take them to the underworld. Once Krampus was done with his mischief, the Germanic people would then celebrate Nikolausstag, or Saint Nicholas Day, on December 6th. The children who, through good behavior, managed to avoid Krampus, or those who were once naughty and survived his punishments, would awaken to gifts which could range from something totally awesome to a rod, a gesture designating good or poor behavior. Krampus uses his force to discourage people from naughtiness and as a means of deterring children from bad behavior. According to Krampus Los Angeles director Al Ridenauer, Krampus is a boogeyman associated with the Christmas season. Ridenauer explains that Krampus is a species rather than a singular creature. Being that he is the counterpart of Saint Nick, Krampus's birch twig may be in reference to the Dutch legend of Saint Nicholas coming back from the dead and then nearly beating a bishop to death with a birch wood, perhaps linking Krampus's role as Saint Nicholas's darker counterpart. Krampus is often covered in sheepskins, as well as heavy chains or cowbells. The chains are thought to have been introduced only after Christian influence on the holiday, as a possible representation of attempting to bind the devil. However, the origin is technically unknown, and the chains and bells could have also been a part of a lost pagan ritual, or perhaps adopted elsewhere as Krampus has been influenced by many other traditions and cultures as well. After 1890, the Austrian postcard industry began to grow after the government released its hold on the industry. Between 1890 and the beginning of World War I, Krampus Christmas cards made by German companies were sold in Austria, Germany, and beyond. They often featured text like Braf sein, be good, and Kuss vom Krampus, greetings from Krampus. Images on the cards often showed crying children being frightened or kidnapped by a terrifying Krampus, among other variations. Cards featuring adults emerged around 1903 and 1904, some depicting them also being punished by Krampus, while others were designed to be funny. There were even cards depicting female versions of Krampus, who were often much more attractive than the male version. They also had a long tongue and horns. Other cards that featured women sometimes showed Krampus courting them or taking them away. Adding adults to the mix may have just been a way to expand the market for the cards. The myth of Krampus diminished after World War II, but returned with the renewed folk culture interest in the 1950s and the 1960s. By the late 20th century, Kampuslauf, or Krampus Runs, became increasingly popular in Austria and Germany as they were seen as a tradition they could enact to help preserve their cultural heritage. Krampus runs often involve alcohol and a parade with people dressed in Krampus costumes, ringing cowbells and scaring and chasing spectators whilst prodding them with sticks. Similar activities were also celebrated in other regions such as the Czech Republic, Hungary, and Slovenia as well. Krampus parades, also called Perstenlauf or Klaubaufa, stem from a pagan tradition that goes back centuries, where young men dressed in costumes marched the streets for the purposes of eliminating or getting rid of the ghosts of winter. 
The costumes, often referred to as Pershtun, are named after the devils they resemble. The masks are influenced by the folklore about evil mountain spirits that appear to cause harm in the winter months. In Western Austria, the pagan tradition of dressing up in Pershtun costumes, also called Teufel or Krampus depending on the region, and taking to the streets to get rid of winter's ghost goes back about 1500 years. In southern Germany's Bavarian area, and in eastern Austria's Alpine area, traditional customs may have included someone dressing up as Saint Nicholas, along with a small posse of Krampuses, angels, and a person with gifts to go door to door the evening of December 5th. At each door, Saint Nicholas asks the children about their behavior, and may also ask the kids to recite their catechism or a seasonal poem, or sing a song while the Krampuses stomped around outside. And if they failed, well, Krampus would go ahead and handle that. American celebrations of Krampus tend to skew more towards the Austrian celebrations for adults that involve drunk men running around in scary costumes. Interestingly, this is not dissimilar to the way Christmas used to be celebrated before the 19th century. According to author Stephen Niesenbaum, Christmas was a holiday that was characterized by boisterous revelry. It was sort of like a combination of Halloween and New Year's Eve and Mardi Gras. These celebrations include mummers, who would demand alcohol door to door, which later evolved into trick-or-treating. Krampus also has roots in the story of a battle between St. Nicholas and the devil, but in recent years, some believe that it has become too commercialized. Krampus's recent resurgence in popularity has expanded the Yuletide figure's reach to a comic book series and a movie. There are many versions and variations of Krampus-like figures all around the world, appearing in both male and female forms. In post-Reformation Germany, a secular character known as Pelznickel emerged to combine both the kind qualities of St. Nicholas and the scary qualities of Krampus-like figures. It's believed that German immigrants brought the legend of Pelznickel over with them to America in the 1700s and the 1800s, and the name slowly morphed into Belsnickel. Today, Belsnickel is a staple of Christmas in Pennsylvania Dutch communities. In Austria and Bavaria, Frau Perkta is described as a woman, some describe her as a witch, who goes around during the 12 days of Christmas rewarding the good and punishing the bad. Her punishments, however, are quite extreme. She's said to cut open the stomachs of naughty children, removing their organs, and replacing them with things like stones or hay. Similarly, in Italy, a fairy woman known as La Bifana visits children on January 5th, leaving things in children's socks at night. If they're good, they receive candy. If they're bad, they get rocks or charcoal. In Greece, goblin-like creatures known as Kalakandroi bring mischief to people's homes during the 12 days of Christmas. They enter through chimneys or doors, and methods of warding them off include a pig's jaw, a black-handled knife, strings of flax, and fire. These are just a few among many others throughout various cultures. Despite his malevolent agenda, his appearance alone is quite intimidating, and likely enough to curb bad behavior, at least for some of us. So as winter rolls in year after year, better hope that you're on the nice list, and not the naughty one. Unless, of course, you're into that. <laughs>